Uh, today's video is about uh, repairing the, um, the brakes of the AD86. Will be a three part uh, special because uh, I'll be showing on the first part, I'll, sh I'll show the repair for the front brakes. The second part will be a repair on the rear brake calipers. And uh, the final third part will be a uh, repair of the uh, sent the uh, brake master cylinder yeah that's the term enjoy okay so uh, in this repair uh, we will be replacing a series of uh, parts uh, and here's the, the tools you will need you will need this special spanner which is a 10 and to an 11 metric uh, spanner and the, the, the special thing about this is that um, it has a special mouth for uh, handling uh, brake lines, so you'll need this. I bought the um, the 11 and 10, the 12 and 13, and then the 13, um, 13, 14, which goes from. This has the interesting parts are the 10, the um, 12, and the 14 um, sizes. In in the Toyota cars, usually they are uh, even. Then you will need. The grease for the rubbers for every every rubber parts. This is a genuine Toyota item, and I recommend that you buy it so that you know what you are uh, using. Then you will need the set of uh, holding springs for the um, for the brake pads. This one is for the rear. This is really expensive, by the way. Uh, Then you will also need, since I will be replacing the brake lines, I'll be installing a set of uh, Goodridge uh, high performance brake lines. These are um, braided, um, stainless braided brake lines with a uh, specially uh, made uh, black overlay to maintain the, the stock look of the car. But the, per the performance is there. Then you will also need the, set, the sets of repair um, boots and uh, and uh, seals for the pistons of uh, both the forward the, um, brakes and the rear brakes. Uh, also, you will need if you want to repair the central uh, brake pump, uh, the brake master cylinder. I think that's the name in English. Uh, you will have to buy this repair uh, kit which comes the, with all the seals and the pistons that you will need to repair the central, the, the brake master cylinder. Here is the reference. Uh, you will also need the holding, um, the holding springs for the front brake pads. Here is the reference. And also, I also bought the set of uh, brake uh, pads you will also need this uh, adjusting bolt, which is a, a special service tool made by Toyota to uh, uh, screw in the, um, the pistons for the rear uh, brake um, cylinders in the, in the calipers. I recommend that you buy this because it's uh, very cheap and will save you a lot of uh, trouble and will ensure that your, trouble, your, your work will be well done. Here's the reference for you to go to your Toyota dealer to buy this. You will also need uh, the brake cleaning spray. Let's get to our work. The first step will be to remove the front cylinders since I will be starting with the front uh, brakes. Here is the uh, front uh, front wheel on the passenger, passenger side and um, I've already put some uh, WD-40 on the contacts of the uh, on the connectors of the brake line since we'll be removing it there's another one here uh, like the manual says here you have to um, loosen up the um, the connector also be careful because fluid will leak out of this brake line when we remove it so uh, have um, a holding container for the oil ready for the for the oil to leak out. 
not to make a mess. It's never enough to point out. When you are working with this sort of stuff, be sure to wear your glasses because there will be oil coming out and the uh, brake oil is uh, nasty, it's bad for your health and if it falls on your eyes, it will, you will be in, a, in trouble. So, uh, always use your glasses and uh, always have a set of rags ready to, uh, to clean up any oil that comes out into uh, places. Also, uh, oil, brake oil will uh, eat your, your paint, so if you see any oil coming into any painted surface, clean it up immediately with a rag. The brake line has a small uh, tin uh, holding um, area that has to slide this way. You have to grab it with your pliers, slide it this way, and then the brake will the brake line will come loose from top to the bottom. You will pull on the brake line, and it will it will be uh, loosened. See, this came out of the top of the brake line. Just grab the pliers and pull it towards you, and it will come out. Here is the brake line, and there is a, a holding pin around the brake line, do not lose it, you will need to reuse this. Then, uh, it's similar for the one, the brake line that's held on the other side of the, um, of the shock absorber, here. There is a, a sliding pin on this side, remove it, and then remove the whole brake, brake line. And now we can remove the brake line uh, through the hole. Now we have to unbolt the, the brake line from the um, brake caliper. That's easy. Let's just turn the, the steering rack all the way to the other side. Okay. So out comes the brake line. See, this is why you should replace your brake lines. If your car is old, like mine, um, and you have not replaced the, the brake lines, this may start to happen. They start to, uh, to develop cracks. And, uh, well, I know this, uh, this is not critical, but uh, this is uh, one of those things that when it becomes critical, <laughs> you don't want to be in the, in the car. So this is uh, more of a prevention uh, measure and uh, I think you should do it uh, also. Now there is a bolt on the lower side of the brake caliper that you have to remove in order to break it loose so that it can lift to the top. Um, it's, uh, it's underneath, you look for it, you'll find it, it's easy. To remove the caliper from the, the wheel uh, hub there are two bolts, one on the top and one on the on the under on the underside of the of the caliper. Um, these are usually very tight, so I recommend you use a breaker bar to remove them. They are 17 millimeter uh, on in size. If your car is uh, like mine, you will have uh, a disc that is well worn i'll be replacing these discs also and uh, there is a the border uh, comes out from the surface and this border uh, holds the caliper in place which means that uh, when you try to remove the caliper it won't won't come out so you will have to use a bit of uh, wood and uh, a hammer to remove the, the caliper. So, out it comes. Once you remove the caliper, um, remove the anti rattle springs and uh, place them on the side. 
you see you have one here and another one on the other side remove all the springs there are two here and another two in here and in here and then there is one, another one the one I just removed over here also there is a metal ring on the piston of the of the caliper remove it check the wear on your brake pads uh, these ones have a lot of material left you can see this notch here uh, when this when the material is all gone until you cannot see the notch it's time to change your brake pads remove the bolt uh, and then the caliper will open <coughs> like so and then you have easy access to the to the anti rattle spring now we have the, the calipers uh, ready to clean I've got some old tooth toothbrushes and uh, my brake cleaner This one is after the cleaning, this one is before. Not to degrease the, the calipers. I'm using my compressor and some dishwashing soap. Use a wire brush between uh, passages with the compressor uh, water and the soap to loosen up the, the dirt. Uh, in painting, prep work is uh, everything so I've degreased the um, calipers and uh, scrubbed them with a wire brush and then cleaned them with a rag. Now with uh, everything clean and we can work without any concerns and without making a mess also. So according to the manual the first thing to, to do is to remove the sliding uh, bushings and boots which are these, these parts here. You can, you can see the difference because uh, you can see from one side to the other. That's the part you, you have to remove. And it comes out quite easily. Just use your hands. Now you have to remove the, the boot. Out comes the boot. This one is uh, broken, but I'll be replacing these boots anyway. We have to clean everything. We have to clean the, the sliding uh, bushings. This one is also uh, broken. But these are not, these are not bad. I, I have seen much worse, much worse um, boots. These are almost almost good. They are broken, okay. But um, we have uh, I have uh, another car that is also needing a rebuild, the Corolla G6R and. Uh, I'll be making a rebuild soon, so um, this will also be interesting for the guys with the uh, with, uh, uh, Corolla E11. Uh, the next step is to remove remove the main uh, main pin boot using a chisel. I'm using the... this, this is just a, a regular chisel, but this needs to be honed. I'll be honing the chisel. Also, don't don't uh, hold this by the this surface because this is a moving surface. We don't want to damage the mechanism. Also, I do not tighten this very hard because I do not want to ovalize the um, the place where the piston goes. We have to insert the chisel between the end of the um, after the boot. There is a, a ring. The ring, I think, is what's holding the, the boot there. So we have to get our, our chisel. So, out comes the remains of the old boot. Okay, so out comes the other part. 
Next step is to remove the piston assembly, piston from the calipers. This is done according to the manual by placing a rag on the uh, on in here in this in this place here like so and then using a compressed air gun and then you insert the the pistol in the, the pistol tip in the place where the bright line was and this will make the cylinder come out of the of the hole and uh, the rag will will hold the the piston do not put your fingers here when doing this that's the most important thing and out it comes remaining oil has decided to come out clean every part thoroughly now the next step is to remove the, the seal you see inside there is a rubber ring that goes through here you just have to insert your a small screwdriver for example and pry it out so there's the old seal it comes out by prying it then just pull on the outer part of the seal it's full of gunk I'll be cleaning all this all this stuff this comes out then a holding ring also comes out now it's fully clean it's fully re disassembled now you have to clean all the gunk that uh, accumulates in the inside of the of the cylinder and do the same for the other caliper see all the sludge there that's what uh, has to come out during the, the cleaning uh, this this sort of sludge can accumulate on the on the brake lines and I don't know what what would be the the consequences of this stuff anyway uh, I'll be cleaning all this up Okay, so now we're ready for painting. Um, I I have placed this uh, rag here to cover the um, the piston so that uh, the paint does not go there. Uh, but uh, other than that, we'll be painting the whole caliper. To paint my calipers, I'll be using um, silver silver color uh, aluminium aluminium color uh, paint. The important aspect to note here is that this has to be high temperature paint because of the temperature of the calipers when they break or else um, uh, the, cali the, the, the caliper paint will come out, will come off. Uh, the color is a matter of personal choice. I selected the... Um, I was thinking of painting the calipers black but uh, I saw in Toyota that the new cars are coming out with uh, silver silver calipers at least that's what i saw um so i thought that maybe this car when it came out it came out with the uh, silver calipers so that's the 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 reason for my choice So after removing the grease cap, uh, clean everything uh, in the in this place. The, clean all this grease. Now there is um, a cotter pin uh, protection. Um, well, there is a, a ring, and then uh, there is the axle hub, uh, the axle hub, and the the, um, the nut that holds the axle hub to the to the axle. Uh, you have to remove the cotter pin, remove the protection and then uh, release the, the nuts in order to remove the, um, the rotor. 
So out comes the, the cutter pin. Remove the protection. And then we have to remove the nut holding all this in place. So remove the the bearing and remove remove the the axle hub. Place your uh, rotors and these uh, wheel hubs in the vise. And uh, well, I, I put some uh, some uh, rag here to uh, not to damage this. You will have to remove four bolts. One there and uh, one here, one here and one here. And then the axle uh, hub, the wheel hub, will be uh, released from the old rotor. Do not exchange hubs and bearings because, well, it's, it's just a matter of uh, common sense. This is a good opportunity for you to renew the the grease inside your uh, your bearing uh, braces. So I'll be cleaning all this up and putting in new grease. Now we have to remove the outer uh, cover, the oil seal for the for the bearing. Using a seal puller for this, but you can use a screwdriver. So, there it is. Now we have to remove the bearing. This. Get some WD-40 or equivalent and spray it over the top of the, the top notch. Let it drain down the, uh, the contact between the hub and the, and the rotor to loosen up the, the assembly. Use a chisel as a wedge between each bolt and the and the rotor and then hammer down to uh, to loosen up the the wheel hub from the from the rotor um, do this all over the the four bolts and uh, it should come off uh, out it comes you can see the the oil penetrated through the wall use a wire brush to clean up the outside of the the wheel hub before inserting the new rotor clean around this area and this area here also the connecting connecting surfaces here it's a good idea to put some compress there through these holes to clean the threads and uh, ensure a, a proper seating of the bolts Clean threads, we can now put the our bolts. I'll also be cleaning the the bolts in the in the grinder with a, with a brass brush to clean all the the threads before inserting them back in place. Always use your safety glasses and gloves. And you do this. Well with both hands it's easier, but you get the you get the idea. All the bolts are clean, now we need to insert the, the new rotor into the disc, into the, the wheel hub, I mean. Tighten the four bolts. Hand tighten them one at a time before tightening uh, a single bolt. Torque the four bolts of the rotor. The adjustment is 47 foot-pounds. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now I'll be re-greasing the, the bearings. Uh, this is uh, axle grease and uh, we have to spread it uh, a nice coat uh, over these, uh, these bearings. Nothing like fresh axle grease for your bearings. Get some axle grease on your glove and then put the bearing over the, the axle grease. to coat it evenly so that we have nice lubrication all over the bearing now as for the inside of the of the hub get a generous amount of uh, axle grease and grease the outside of the bearing I put some newspaper under that because the excess will likely go to the floor and uh, we don't want to be cleaning this up you need to coat all the surfaces including the um, the grease cap which is the the silvery thing that we took out when we had to gain access to the cotter pin and the uh, axle nuts the silver cap on the center of the of the hub. Reinsert the bearing and then put in the the bearing seal, the oil seal. Now installing the the oil seal, use a use a, use a wooden block and then press it down onto the to the wheel hub until it's nice and tight. See fresh grease in the in the bearings. Now reinsert the the wheel hub into its place. Turn the turn the, the rotor a few times to make the the grease work its way inside the, the bearing. And now we have to clean up the the outer bearing to to put it into its place. Some more axle grease for the outer bearing. Turn the inside of the bearing while you put the grease. To, um, to make sure that uh, the new grease goes into the spaces in the bearing, like so. Now the bearing goes into its place, and then we put the spacer. There is a notch that you have to align the spacer with, insert a nut. There, this, this nut has to be torqued according to spec. The torque for this nut is 27 foot pound. Or if you if you well if you don't have a torque wrench, which I definitely recommend that you you should buy one, you tighten it all the way, and then just tighten a quarter turn or a third turn. But well, torque wrench is the best, so buy one. If you do not tighten this the adequate way with the appropriate torque, what happens is you'll have premature bearing failure that can cost you money. So the, the money you will spend on bearings, it's uh, just one bearing is enough to buy a torque wrench or at least uh, <clears throat> or one or two bearings because this adjusts both bearings. So uh, well, buy the, the the torque wrench because you will you will save money in the end. There it is. Now after tightening the the nut to spec. You should untighten it like so until it can be tightened by hand. Then tighten it until, until you cannot uh, tighten anymore, and then uh, rotate the hub assembly. You see, it's loose, and then tighten it until you feel that the hub assembly is starting to 
to become uh, more more hard to turn. Uh, at that point, the the bearing is uh, now now uh, held in place. Of course, that we should use a dynamometer and all this stuff, but um, according to the manual. But in this case, uh, tighten by hand and feel it. Okay. What you should do is uh, reinsert the, the cover and then the cutter pin. Now bend the cutter pin to put it in place and so that it holds in the assembly and then clean the, the grease cap, the inside of the grease cap which is full of old grease and uh, Insert new grease here on, on the on the outside of on the inner part of the um, the grease cap and put it back in place. Yeah, it's easy. Now put some axle grease on the inside of the grease cap. Uh, not just a coat. You have to leave a layer of the grease in there because this acts as a like a small reserve of uh, lubrication to go around the, the hub and ensure that those bearings have always have nice and uh, clean um, axle grease to lubricate them. Now, reinsert, reinsert the, the grease cap into its place, like so. then with some soft, a bit of soft persuasion, insert it into its place. Hammer around the center of the, of the cap evenly to make sure it sits and then you're done. Now we're ready to um, proceed with the rebuild of the calibers and uh, you need to do this, you need two things. You need uh, the cylinder rebuild kit and this grease which is manufactured by Toyota as well as the kit. Um, they come, the kits come with a pack of grease but I decided that I will be using the one from the, from the tube since this may have been in stock for a lot of time and uh, well that's just uh, my opinion but you can use the grease in the pack. It's just my opinion. So, the, the first step is to get your uh, caliper. Okay, so now we, we open up the, the kit. This comes with two seals. One for each caliper. I won't be using the scissors on this. And then carefully take out the, the seal. Anyway, I'll be breezing this up because it seems uh, this grease seems a little dry, maybe from being in stock. So. I'll be applying uh, a little bit of grease to allow the piston to slide in without any, any interference because the piston will have to slide in through the um, in the caliper and uh, this needs to be soft and uh, not to ruin the seal. So 
Now, clean up the excess grease. Then take your caliper, insert the seal into the groove. I'll show you. Insert the seal into the groove using only your hands. Don't use any, any tools because you may likely ruin the seal. There it is. You sit it all around. Okay, brand new seal. Then you have to get the piston and then apply grease to the surface of the piston like so. Then you have to slide the piston into its place. Using my nylon hammer for this, the butt of the hammer. You can also use a, a wood chop, place it in the, in the piston. And then use the soft hammer to slide the piston into place. There it is, with the grease uh, that was in the piston coming out. So it's making a tight seal. Do the same for the other caliper. Now we have a ring and the wood. First thing we do is uh, grease the wood. To install the, the, the wood, you should install it this way. There is the inner part, the inner part is, should be turned towards the piston, like so. It goes in like so. Insert it uh, around the sides uh, and then set in the ring. I inserted the the, wall, the piston too far into the um, into the hole into the cylinder. So I'll have to apply compress there to pull it out again, and then uh, pull the the boot towards the outside so that the metal you can see the metal should be should be visible so that it can meet the the brake pad. On the piston there is a ring and the ring should uh, hold, should match the the inner part of the, the boot so that the boot cannot uh, move freely, like it will hold into the groove of the piston. Make sure that this is uh, matched up. Do the same for both calipers, check that the wood is securely held in place against the groove in the piston. Run your, your fingers around the piston 
to make sure that the, um, the wood will not snap out. Okay, it's done. Now the next step is to install the the sliding bushing uh, wood. To do this, you need a 22 mm socket wrench, a socket, uh, yeah, socket uh, width, and uh, then you get the brake caliper. We're putting a wood shop here, not to damage anything. Now we have to put the, the wood into its place. But first, apply some grease. Apply some grease to the wood. Inside and out. Place the wood into its place. Like so. Then insert the 22 millimeter socket wrench, like so. And then we will press this in slowly so that it can go evenly. So, there it is, the main uh, boot for the sliding bushing. Be careful not to press on the, on the boot itself, but on the, out, on the outside. There is, there it is, second boot. Now we have to insert the dust boots. They are symmetric, as far as I can see. Grease this up. Grease up just the outside. No need for uh, putting grease on the inside. Also, make sure that... Let's grease up also here to um, ensure that this slides without any problems. Okay, so it's nice and fluffy, no kinks, and it seals the air, also goes around, so it's correct. Now, we have to set the bushing into place. As far as I can see, they are similar, they are uh, symmetric. So, grease up the bushing. And then um, try to work your way through the seal. To make it go smoothly through the through the wood. Okay, make sure that this slides well. Okay, so it's done. Now the second one. Okay, so 
That's it for the calipers uh, rebuild. We'll be installing the new anti-rattle springs for the front calipers. We have a middle piece and uh, outside pieces. After inserting the anti-rattle spring, anti springs and the, the brake pads, you're ready to insert the, them into the, into the hub. Now insert the holding bracket into the hub, reinsert the anti-rattle uh, shim into the piston. Apply grease to the guiding uh, pin and then slide the caliper from the top Remove the air from the from the boot and then slide slide the caliper over the brake pads try to hold the the anti uh, shim into its place so that it does not move clean the excess grease And then for the for the guide bolt that goes into the bottom bushing, um, I'll be coating it with anti seize compound. It's a coppery paste. So there it is, because uh, the bushing may slide. So it's always a good idea to have lubrication there. So now for the uh, brake lines, I'll be putting in two brand new Goodrich um, brake lines for the A86. You may have to file off some, some of these uh, inner part of the the holding clip um, because the size of the hose for the Goodrich um, hoses in the the middle holding is um, is larger than the stock uh, hose. You see what I mean? When you try to insert it, it won't go in, so you have to enlarge this uh, a little bit. Grind the, the bolts for the calipers to clean them up. You have to torque the two um, bolts that hold the caliper to the dust cover. And uh, those bolts are uh, 47 foot pound. Now we'll be uh, tightening the um, the cylinder installation bolt, which is a smaller bolt uh, on the on the uh, lowest part of the um, of the caliper, set your torque range for uh, 14 foot pounds. Tighten the bolt. That's okay. So uh, this concludes the the first part. Okay, so this concludes the first part of the brake uh, repair on this 1987 uh, Corolla and uh, the, the next step will be to repair the rear uh, brake calipers and uh, after that I'll be repairing the central uh, the brake master cylinder yeah. well, we, say, we say bomba central in, uh, in Portuguese so that's why I'm always saying central pump. Yeah, which is a literal translation. 
So, uh, like always, do your work uh, slowly, try to do it well at the first time. <laughs> I speak against myself because I, uh, I often make mistakes, but that's life and uh, you're always learning. Uh, always follow the manual, that's my, my recommendation. Uh, clean your tools once you're done. And, uh, well, if you like the video, as always, if you like the video, uh, please don't forget to like and uh, subscribe if you want to receive any more uh, videos from me about this car and other Toyotas. Pronto, e aproveito também para mandar um agradecimento à, à malta do E86PT.com uh, Particularmente o Rosteirinho, o PAC, o, uh, o Pardal Pá, Essa malta toda que agora não estou a lembrar, o RT Pá, Essa malta toda que... e aqueles que eu não estou aqui a mencionar, pá, peço desculpa uh, pá, Mas agradeço a toda a gente pelas, pelas dicas pá, e pela, pelo nosso apoio na, na thread e uh, espero que estes vídeos sirvam para alguma coisa. Um abraço.